Hi, my name is John Savile, and in this quick video, I want to just talk about Azure AD B2B, business to business, and Azure AD B2C, business to consumer. So if we take a really quick step back, if I think traditionally, I have my on-premises, and I have my Active Directory, and then in Azure, we create an Azure AD instance. And when I have my objects kind of created in my on-premises AD, I want those objects to project into Azure AD. And the way we do that is we connect them together. We have a component, Azure AD Connect, and this component synchronizes between AD and Azure AD. It can do things like password right back if I change my password up here. But essentially now my identity has a version in Azure AD as well. And then through this cloud, through the Azure AD, I can collaborate, I can think, well, there's other cloud services that Azure AD federates with. And I can think about things like Office 365. I can think Azure services. And they're all going to be enabled through that Azure AD account. And that's fantastic for my company and sort of my users. But now let's take an example of, well, I have a partner company. There's a partner company over here. They have their own Azure AD. I don't want to create an entirely separate user over here that then has its own password. Um, I then have to worry about, hey, users have multiple passwords. I want to take advantage of the account that that user already has over here. So what we have is Azure B2B. And what Azure B2B does is it enables me to invite a guest. So if I quickly kind of go and look at the portal, if I look at my various users, my users could be cloud users, they were created in Azure AD, they could source from Active Directory. But I can do a new guest user. When I do that new guest user, I can just type in an email address and a message saying, hey, I, I want to invite you to sort of collaborate with me in my organization. Now, that target person, if they're in Azure AD, they're going to get that invite, they'll redeem it, and at that point, I basically create kind of like a, a stub object in my local Azure AD that I can then give that permissions on my resources. For example, in Office 365, I could now collaborate with them. Uh, we could do SharePoint collaboration, documents. When I think about more advanced features of Azure AD, like Azure AD Premium, for every one user I have licensed for Azure AD Premium, I can enable the various capabilities for five users that are connected via B2B. So this is my B2B connection. Now what if they're not in Azure AD? Well, if they have a Microsoft account, that works as well. So I can have a user here, and they have a Microsoft ID. And once again, they'll get that invite, they'll sign in with their Microsoft account, and they can redeem it, and then they'll have a stub object in my Azure AD as well. And I can collaborate with them. I can give them access to various resources. In that invite, I can actually type any email address I want. I could have done a Gmail account, I could have done a Facebook, it doesn't matter. But what happens there is when I send that invite, let's say to a Gmail account for example, the Gmail inbox will get that invite, the user would then click the link, and in that link it's going to say you need a Microsoft account. It would then prompt me and help me create the Microsoft account, and then that is what would then get linked into my Azure AD and my B2B. So I can invite any Microsoft ID or any other email address, Gmail, Facebook, it doesn't matter. But when that user redeems it, they're not signing in with their Google account or their Facebook account. They're signing in with a new Microsoft account it will make them create, but it could be their Gmail email address. So hopefully that's very clear the difference. Yes, it's the Gmail address, but I'm just using that address to create a Microsoft account. I'm not logging in with my Google account to access this. So B2B, Azure AD, Microsoft ID. 
and it's focused around, I want to collaborate, they're my partners. Because these B2B users, well, they have these objects in my Azure AD. I can give them rights to resources, Azure services. They can access and collaborate in my SharePoint, in my Office 365. So this is a true business collaboration, and that's what that's aimed at. I want to collaborate with my partners for my internal type services. Azure AD, Microsoft account. But now I'm saying, okay, well, that's fine, but I actually want to work with my customers. I want to publish an application to my customers, and I want them to be able to actually sign in with a Facebook ID, a Google ID, or maybe I want them to actually go and create their own accounts. And I actually should have said, actually very quickly, this email, that's fine for sort of one-off users. If you want to import a bulk of users, uh, another option is through PowerShell, I can basically give it a whole list of accounts that it can go and read in and not require redemption. It will just add them. On GitHub, there's actually a self-service portal. So I could pre-approve certain suffixes and then the users on those pre-approved suffixes could just go self-serve to say, hey, I want to be added as a B2B user, and then they would be available. So I don't have to use that kind of one-at-a-time approach. I can bulk import, I can enable kind of a self-service, and that, that's up on GitHub, that portal. So back to my consumer one. Hey, I have this app, I've got this fantastic app, and I want my customers to be able to sign in with their existing social identities. So for that solution, we have Azure AD B2C. Now the Azure AD B2C is a completely different construct. It is in no way tied to my regular Azure AD. With B2B, I'm using my existing Azure AD to add my partners in so I can collaborate and work with them on my internal services. With B2C, my focus is, hey, I want to publish a web app to my customers. I want to publish a mobile app to my customers. I want my customers, those consumers, to use those consumer identities. So with B2C, I create a B2C instance. So if I kind of jump over here super quick, I would have to change, so I've already pre-created one. I would change to a B2C instance. Once I do that, I would actually go and find, so if it goes to my all services, and if I quickly type in, jump over here, there's my Azure AD B2C. So it's going to go and find that sort of uh, service that I have available in my Azure AD. You can see I've created it already. And so it's a different object. It is not linked to my Azure AD at all. So what can I do with the B2C? So with the B2C, there's a number of different options for me. Because I already have all these various users sitting out here. Maybe it's a Google account. Maybe it's a Facebook account. Maybe it's Azure AD. So maybe it's a consumer, but they want to use an Azure AD account. So, hey, I have an Azure AD with a user in it. Maybe it's a Microsoft account. And maybe they don't have any kind of social account. Um, my wife recently got me some edible cookie dough, and it was fantastic, and the first thing I did was go to the website. And when I went to the website, and you've probably seen this yourselves, there was like a button to sign in with a Google account, a button to sign in with a Microsoft account, or I could create an account. So I didn't want to use an existing social identity, I can just create one local to the service. And so I can do the same thing in B2C. Yes, I can allow consumers to use their existing consumer identities. Yes, I can go and use an Azure AD account into here, or I can create local accounts based on maybe it's an email address, maybe a certain username I'm going to configure. So with B2C, I actually go and light up which identity providers do I want to support. So yes, there's local accounts. Am I going to use an email address or some kind of username? But I can add various um, identity providers. So here you're going to see ones I can add Microsoft account, Google accounts, Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, Weibo, QQ, WeChat, Twitter, GitHub. So all of those different accounts, I pick the ones I want to light up for my B2C. 
So then when users actually sign into my application, any of the ones I've enabled, they can then use that identity. So think B to C, I have a customer facing app, so a web app, a mobile app. I want them to use a social ID, an Azure AD, or a local account. But I cannot use B to C to collaborate on Office, for example. Office 365 has zero clue what I can do with a B to C. I can't go and collaborate on SharePoint. I can't go and give access B to C to Azure resources. B to C is I have my web, my mobile app, I want to give it to my customers. Social identity, Azure AD, local account. B to B, hey, I want to collaborate with my partner, Azure AD or Microsoft ID. Again, I can use other email accounts, but I'm still going to create a Microsoft account for that. This is where I want to collaborate, use like Office 365 and those services. That's really the big difference, and the name kind of tells you that. Hey, B2B, business to business, I want to collaborate with you. B2C, I want to offer something to my customers. So that kind of clears up where we would use one over the other. I'm going to use that B2B when I want to collaborate with my partners. B2C, I want to enable my customers to use some identity for that customer-facing app. Thank you.